I would like to share with you today how implementation of a decades-old established and proven surgery could dramatically improve or maybe even save your life. Life of a family member, a friend, or maybe just an acquaintance. By having knowledge about this surgery, it will allow you to give someone, perhaps even yourself, one of the greatest gifts of all, the relief of suffering. In January of 2003, a gentleman named Roger came to see me as a new patient. He told me that he was a petroleum engineer working as an oil executive and that his career was going extremely well, but it really didn't matter because he suffered from such severe symptoms of diabetic peripheral neuropathy. He told me he had seen this article in the newspaper about this new type of surgery that we were doing for diabetic peripheral neuropathy. Diabetic peripheral neuropathy causes symptoms like numbness, tingling, burning, loss of balance, tremendous amounts of burning and other types of pain. He told me his symptoms were getting worse by the day. My clinical experiences with Roger were truly profound and transformative for us both. They changed the way I practice. They gave me a true understanding into how important this surgery really is, and it's why I'm here today. When I finished my examination with Roger, I told him I thought he would be a good surgical candidate. Can I have my surgery tomorrow, he asked. I thought, wow, this guy really is a hard-driven oil executive used to getting things done. Now try to imagine what goes through the mind of a patient who suffers from diabetic peripheral neuropathy. Am I going to trip and fall again today and fracture my hip because my feet can't detect an uneven surface on the floor? Or will this afternoon, when I take my shoes off, will one of them be filled with blood because I walked around on a pebble all day and I couldn't feel it and it wore a hole through the bottom of my foot? Or tonight, will that be that one rare and miraculous night when I can fall asleep without the feeling that someone's holding a blowtorch beneath my toes? Now most people know the seriousness of diabetes and the common complications blindness, kidney failure, depression, loss of a foot or leg due to amputation. But what most people don't know is that our current treatment of diabetic peripheral neuropathy is incredibly incomplete. Shockingly, the medical literature, a small group of surgeons, and a lucky few patients who were operated on by them have known about this since the 1980s the early 1980s. But yet, here we are, four decades later, and hardly anyone knows about this treatment, doctors or patients. And many patients are still needlessly suffering because of this lack of knowledge and because our medical education and training simply have not kept up with the current clinical medical science and peer-reviewed literature. There are 34.2 million people in the United States that suffer from diabetes. 88 million more have prediabetes. These numbers are forecasted to get much worse by the year 2030. That means right now, here today, one in three of us, in fact, are prediabetic, and one in 10 of us has full-blown diabetes. Every seven seconds, somewhere in the world, a leg is amputated. That means that during this short talk alone, about a hundred legs are being taken off. Pretty incredible. It's estimated that more than one million dollars is spent every 30 minutes to treat a complication of the foot due to diabetes, most of the time because of peripheral neuropathy. These folks that have a loss of sensation will 16 percent of the time uh, develop a foot ulceration. And if you develop a foot ulceration, then you have about a 25% chance of losing a foot or leg to amputation. Once you lose a leg to amputation, you have a 7 in 10 chance of not living more than five years. Now, Roger's just one of 17 million more patients that are in the same predicament that he is. So 
there are many aspects of diabetic peripheral neuropathy and many things that have to be factored into consideration. But one thing is extremely well established, and that is diabetes causes nerves to swell. When a nerve has increased glucose, that glucose gets converted into another sugar called sorbitol. And sorbitol loves water and brings water into the nerve. And that's what causes a diabetic nerve to swell. In fact, diabetic nerves are 50% bigger in diameter than non-diabetic nerves. Peripheral nerves travel through anatomical tunnels. One that comes to mind very quickly is the carpal tunnel in the hand. Now, interestingly, it's estimated that 2% of the United States population will develop carpal tunnel syndrome, whereas in the diabetic population, it's 14 to 28%. Now, there are four major tunnels in the lower extremity, and when diabetes causes the nerves in these tunnels to swell, those nerves will become entrapped. Entrapment causes the symptoms that I listed off at the beginning, the numbness, tingling, loss of sensation, horrible types of burning. So even though diabetic peripheral neuropathy is a very complex situation, the actuality is that in many cases, it's a problem of a swollen nerve in a tight tunnel. Now, an incredible observation was made in the early 1980s by my mentor, Dr. A. Lee Dellen, who is a professor of plastic and neurosurgery at Johns Hopkins. In patients that had carpal tunnel syndrome in his practice, who also were diabetic, had diabetic peripheral neuropathy, and had a loss of sensation in their fingers, many of them, in fact, most of them came back after he relieved their carpal tunnel pain, they would say to him, you know, my carpal tunnel pain's gone, but I now have sensation in these fingers that I didn't have before. Now, this was just not what we were taught then, and it's certainly not what's being taught in all, virtually all medical schools in the world today. Once you have diabetic peripheral neuropathy, that's it. It's irreversible. There's nothing that you can do for it. Dr. Dellen then went on to decompress other known sites of entrapment in both the upper and lower extremities. And miraculously, in addition to relieving their suffering, he was able to restore sensation and give them full function in their hands and their feet. Now let's get back to my patient, Roger. So Roger comes back seven days postoperatively, and with tears in his eyes, he thanks me for saving his life. I remember telling him, I don't really think I saved your life. We did a de decompression of your nerves where we took the tight constriction off of that nerve and allowed that nerve to regenerate. And once you remove a tight constriction from a nerve, that nerve will regenerate even in patients with diabetes. Adamantly, he disagreed, and he said, you did save my life, while wiping tears away from his eyes. He told me today I had my suicide completely planned to the last detail. The insurance policies were checked to make sure my family was still covered. I had the 9 millimeter loaded in the briefcase. I had the note written to them telling them how much I loved them but I couldn't live with this type of burning pain any longer. And I even had the location selected. I thought at that moment, while I was shocked and stunned, that I had certainly known how important this surgery was because I'd had a fair amount of history doing it. But until that specific moment, I never realized how important the magnitude of this surgery really had. He told me, you see, Doc, today was the day. If I hadn't seen any improvement, there wouldn't have been a post-operative visit today. And I have to add, I didn't operate on him the next day like he wanted me to. Now, I've been doing this surgery for more than 20 years successfully, and I've learned many things during that period of time. As in all of medicine and surgery, there is no one panacea. And certainly what we've talked about here today is not indicated for every patient that suffers from diabetic peripheral neuropathy. But I remember at the end of that visit, 
the epical visit, let's call it, Roger said to me, or asked me a question that I asked myself frequently. Doc, why didn't any of my other doctors know about this? I've been to so many of them. So I ask you if you can help remember just three things today about what we've talked about. You may be able to give somebody you know or love one of these gifts of the relief of suffering. And that is number one, diabetic nerve swell. And when a diabetic nerve swells, it can become entrapped in an anatomical tunnel. This causes the symptoms of diabetic peripheral neuropathy, numbness, tingling, loss of protective sensation. If you decompress that nerve and take the pressure off, that nerve can come back to life, even in diabetic patients. So that patient doesn't have to worry about potential amputation and months and months of extended and expensive wound care. Their life can get back. Now we know that we saved Roger's life, but what about the life of his wife and two daughters? Very powerful when you think about it. So I'd like to just help these people out there by communicating that there is a way to address this problem and that your knowledge of what we talked about today can help reset some of the current thought out there so that we can help change the way diabetic peripheral neuropathy is currently being treated. Thank you.